I think that when most of us start out with um, the study of, of mushrooms and toastals, uh, we probably start out with a field guide. And these days we are just so blessed with wonderful field guides. Um, we've got Jeff Kibbe's, um, he's working on a third volume now, beautifully hand-drawn, beautifully illustrated, um, Mushrooms and Toastals of Britain and Europe. Um, we've got um, a two-volume Fungi of Temperate Europe, which is just the most astonishing photographs and apps and, and wonderful text. So we, we have no excuse, in a way, um, for not being pulled in with all this amazing literature that's out there. And even despite all of that, you will get to the stage where um, you, you cannot find with confidence what it is you've collected. There are so many things that look just like it. And it's at this point that I think uh, a lot of us who, who have got bitten by the bug, if you like, um, we start thinking about slightly more technical books and using a microscope. You can get away with an awful lot and have a huge amount of fun with the fungi without doing that. And I always say you've got your field notes, always take field notes when you collect your fungi out of doors and it tells you where you were and when you were there and um, you can jot down notes about what your fungus was growing in, was it wood or dung, um, what, were the, what was the vegetation round about, what were the trees, that can all be important information to help you narrow down what it is you've collected. And if you really want to, another excellent discipline is drawing what you found. There's no better way of getting to closely scrutinise what it is you've seen, whether it has a ring on the stem, whether there are any little fibres that might have been a cobwebby ring that have disappeared as the fungus has opened up. Um, they never look like the pictures in the book. That's the other problem with them, of course. And that makes, that's the fun and the challenge. If you do go a little bit further, you can start moving on to slightly more technical books. This is uh, David Bortman's book on the genus Hygrocybe. And again, beautifully illustrated with descriptive text, both macro and micro information, photographs and drawings of what it is that you're seeing down the microscope, the important characters. And then there are also books of just keys, which don't have the lovely photographs, but which are a Bible um, as you get further on. The trouble with these, of course, is that you need microscopes to really be able to use them. So this is my setup. I have two microscopes. This is, um, I would say, really a glorified magnifying glass. Uh, it goes up to, it magnifies things up to times 40, and you can put them as a whole object down here and look down the eyepieces and, and have a, a, a nice steady magnification. And this one over here, this is the real workhorse. Uh, this is what we call a compound microscope. And that will take, you have to prepare tiny fragments of, of the bit of fungus you want to look at, and mount them on a glass slide, and you can magnify them up to times 1000 if you need to. Sometimes you really do need to. But not everybody wants to go down there. I always encourage people, I don't have a science, science background at all, and I found I could do this to my amazement, and it's given me just hours of fun and pleasure. I can't always get things out, it's quite frustrating sometimes, um, but the structures that you will see down there are delightful. Well, I think they are anyway. <laughs> One really interesting project that I've been involved in um, that was started um, uh, as a, a short contract and has gone on beyond that by the, B the British Mycological Society is the Recommended English Names for Fungi project. Now you either love them or hate them and I know that a lot um, of, uh, of mycologists really don't like it. They feel everyone should learn the scientific name because that is what these things are known by across the globe. Um, I've taken an awful lot of public guided walks and I know that after the third scientific name you've pretty much lost the audience and they're thinking I can't deal with this group. Um, if you give them English names, common names we call them, um, yes they're still new names but it's not like a completely new language and so we thought uh, particularly because there were so many new field guides coming out and the publishers were insisting on English names and everyone was making up different English names for these, these fungi we thought we would try and um, create a set of recommended names nobody can force these names normally as in plants and, and birds the names evolve over hundreds of years and they're more um, vernacular names. There are hardly any in British culture, hardly any vernacular names for the fungi, which is why there is this huge gap. 
So I've had a lot of fun. Um, we're still doing it, a small group of us. We try and put up um, 100 new names every year. We don't always manage that. Um, they go on the British Mycological Society website for a year and if anyone doesn't like them or has a comment or a better idea, they're able to come back and, and then we make decisions at the end of that year. It's fascinating. Um, I use, uh, there's a, it's an old book, British Bithidio Mycetes by a chap called Carlton Ray. And many of the early mycologists were classic scholars and the scientific names of mushrooms and toadstools are often made up of a mix of Greek and Latin. And for each scientific name, he gives the Latin translation and also the Greek with the Greek script, which I find amazing and I've used as a basis. You can't completely replicate the scientific name in English. It just doesn't work because sometimes there could be three or four um, English words locked up in a single um, Latin um, word. So we tried to limit the, the English names to just two words, and we've tried to incorporate some humour and a bit of cultural reference as well. It's been a great fun project, and um, when I see people actually using the names that we've suggested, that's a bit special. <laughs>